we're, we're trying to get a hold of this guy who um, wrote this great book. Uh, uh, Sarah or Jeffy, could you just um, ask Julie to bring in my uh, I, iPad? Um, I downloaded the book because I didn't have the copy of it here. Um, uh, I read it about oh about a year ago. Uh, Stephen Dubner gave it to me from uh, Freakonomics, and it's Physics for Future Presidents, and it's great. It's it's basically it's like Physics for Dummies, um, <laughs> which I think most future presidents, uh, at least the ones I've seen, are, probably will be. Um, but uh, it explains all of the different. Um, um, physics problems that you know for for instance um uh terrorism and dirty bombs and everything else and one of them was the meltdown at chernobyl and i remembered that last night because i was i was up about gosh about 1 30 um this morning i couldn't sleep and because this is bothering me there's something wrong here there's something wrong with the libya thing and there's something wrong with this um japanese uh power plant and i i can't figure it out yet because i don't trust anybody have you guys found yourself doing this i don't necessarily trust the japanese government because they may be so overwhelmed that they don't even know what's going on i don't think the japanese are lying to everybody but then again their whole economy could be at stake so you know they it's in their best interest i guess not to say the truth yeah they don't want to create widespread pa panic either sure. so and I, I i don't understand I don't understand our side because we have a sur uh, we have a surgeon general who is saying, yeah, you know what? If you're living in California, maybe you should go get some iodine tablets. That's insane. Yeah, that's more dangerous than I mean any possible. That I mean, unless there's a nuclear disaster going on in California that we don't know about. Okay, because <laughs> I haven't heard that. Yeah, report. I mean, it it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I, I got up last night and I'm reading about uh, Chernobyl from the book Physics for Future Presidents. And this guy's one of the leading uh, uh, physicists, or uh, 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 I think he's a nuclear scientist as well. Um, and uh, he's one of the leading guys. And he's at the University of Berkeley. So you know he's a lefty. And in reading his book, I haven't read it in about a year or so, but um, in reading the book, I was left with the impression that he doesn't like nuclear energy. He doesn't, he's a greenie and everything else. But he's at least a facts-driven guy. You know, he's, he doesn't necessarily draw any conclusions. This book is to help you think and you decide what's right. And he says, I'm going to give many details about the accident in Chernobyl because it is frequently referred to by people hoping to influence policy. The facts can easily be exaggerated and easily downplayed. So it's useful to know the facts. Most of the harm from Chernobyl accident was done in the first few weeks. Each nucleus can explode only once, so the radioactivity gets used up. After 15 minutes, the radioactivity had dropped to one quarter of its initial value. After one day, to one fifteenth. After three months, to less than one percent. But there are still some left even today. But much of the radiation literally went up in smoke, and the only radiation and, and, and only the radiation near the ground affected the population. Now think of just that. Only the radiation near the ground, not the stuff that went up in smoke, really affected people. Now how, if that is true, how does anyone our, our, our government think that the, the radiation that is going up in steam? is affecting people in California. Or where is it? The Aleutians today, right? It's going to tomorrow. hit the... Is it, I think it's Aleutians today and California tomorrow, wasn't it? Mm, I, thought, I, I thought it was both. I don't know. Tomorrow. I'm staying in my house, and I'm in New yeah. York. Mm -hmm. um, it is hard to estimate the total radiation exposure to humans. About 30,000 people near the reactor, this is Chernobyl, are thought to have received about 45 rem each on average similar to the average dose received by the survivors of Hiroshima. Note that this average level is too small to induce radiation sickness, but that the chance of additional cancer for people exposed is 45 uh, over 2,500 equals one-eighth percent. So if you're exposed to the amount of radiation that the people who are living around Chernobyl were exposed to, you have an additional cancer, a chance of getting cancer, of 1.8%. 
That risk should lead to about 500 cancer deaths in addition to the 6,000 normal cancers from natural causes in the area. The government decided to evacuate all regions around Chernobyl in which a person would receive a lifetime dose of 35 rem or more. For most of the region, the radioactivity now in 2008 died down to the level well below one rem per year. So in principle, people could now move back. Now, he writes, here is the tough question the kind of the president might have to address. Was the evacuation of the Chernobyl region wise? To think of this, imagine this, instead of being a future president, you're just a reg resident of Chernobyl. Right after the accident, you have to make a choice. Imagine that unless you left, you would get a radiation dose of 45 rem. And as I've just shown, that dose increases your cancer risk from 20% to 21.8%. If given a choice, would you give up your home in order to avoid this 1.8% increase? Some people would say yes, and they would evacuate even if not required to do so. Some people would stay. The additional risk is small, but they would decide, and the, and, uh, the loss in giving up their homes would be huge. So... If that's Chernobyl, that the real risk for those living around the plant at the time, remember, you don't have that. Jap Japan moved people 12 miles away almost immediately. And this wasn't, this wasn't burning like Chernobyl was. Now, I don't even know what's going on now, but it wasn't then. You also have such devastation in that area that you don't have you don't have everybody around. They weren't there when it when it happened in the first place. And the in Chernobyl, the worst ever, only increased your chance of cancer by 1.8%. Now I don't understand what the hell is happening. This story is not fact-based driven. Now, how is anyone supposed to make any decision when we're not basing anything on the facts? So what is it based on? Is it based on Hillary Clinton came out yesterday and said, you know, we really should reconsider what we're going to do with our nuclear power. I mean, is it something that we want? Is it something we should continue? Well, what is that based on? We get what, 28% of our power? A nuclear is 19.5, uh, I think. 19.5, that's all electricity? Of, of electricity, yes. Electricity. Mm -hmm. So 20% of our electricity comes from nuclear power plants. Maybe 28 is, is Japan. I think 28 is Japan. And 75 in France. I mean, what? where are you going to replace that? By the way, the EPA is today implementing new rules to go against um, uh, mercury. Mercury, they are now limiting mercury. This particular rule is to go against coal manufacturers. That's the only one this affects. Coal. So we have the president now going and targeting oil companies, targeting the um, uh, Gulf region through Cass Sunstein, making regulation impossible to be able to get new permits to drill. Then you have the EPA going after our coal industry, and now we're having an argument not based on any facts. Uh, tell me what the facts are. And we're starting to talk about maybe we don't have nuclear energy either. Help, help me out here. W what, are you, what are we running our lives on? Do you know how many people, and I, I don't mean this to be, um, I mean this as serious as I can say it. Do you know how many people will starve to death? If you get rid of, what, 40% of our energy? If you limit coal, limit oil, and erase nukes? L let's just say we get 20% of our energy as re reduction. W where, where is that reduction taking place? How do you grow with 20%? You don't. You de-develop, which is the Marxist globalist plan. You de-develop.